Okay, uh, can you hear me clearly? Oh, echo? Oh. Uh, thank you. Very glad to see you here. And uh, it's not easy that I have a long journey flying from China to San Francisco and then from San Francisco to, the, to Poland. So, very glad to see you here. <laughs> And today I will talk about how we're using Rust in Rust. Does anybody here know the Rust? Please. Oh, great, amazing, too many. <laughs> and before I start, I will let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Liu Tang, you can call me Satan. And now I'm the chief engineer of Ping Kai, and we have been developing a next generation hybrided transaction and analytic. A database. Um, we call it TiDB. Maybe someone knows it. And then, uh, based on the TiDB, uh, we have built a distributed transactional key value database. We call it TiKV and it's written in Rust. And uh, in my spare time, I'm also an open source lover and I have developed some open sources like Rust Plum issues and Rust, uh, Rust IS, and uh, we which I will talk about today, the Rust IS and the gRPC IS and the GoMetrical and the NetDB, et cetera. Uh, that's all. Today's, this is the, today's agenda for this talk. I have four parts. And at first, I will talk about why we need to use Rust. And then I will give a brief introduction about Rust. And then I will show you how we use Rust in the Rust. In the Rust. Sorry. And uh, at the end, I will talk about something about our product, TechTV. Oh, okay, let's begin. The first is why. Why we use Rust? And assume that everybody here, you want to build a database or storage server. So uh, maybe the first, the simple thing is that you use one load and uh, you can here, you can let me use my circle or PostgreSQL, circle and that's it, okay and the client write data to this load, and the client write, read the data from this load, and it works well. But as you can see, the load is only one load, and it has a single point. So, if the load is crashed, and uh, the service is unavailable, horrible. And uh, furthermore, if the load can't be recoverable, so you lose all your data. Uh, it's not acceptable in some database. So, how can we solve this problem? And mostly, here, we need replication. And, and as you can see here, we add a new slave, uh, and new load, and we call the old load the master, and the, the new load as a slave, like the common MySQL does. And we mostly, for better performance, we use a synchronized replication, and when the client writes data to the master load, and the master reply to the client, okay, the data is saved. And then the, the master will replicate the data from the, to the slave asynchronously. This works well. In, uh, in most of the MySQL architecture, we use this replication mode. But as you can see that a single replication has a problem is that because the replication is asynchronous, so sometimes the slave can't have the latest data if the master is down and we the slave is promoted to the new master. And uh, we found that the slave, the slave can't have the newest data. So at this time, the slave had one, had A and B, but we lost A. And this is still some acceptable, uh, can't acceptable in some critical database scenarios. So how can we do so this problem? And uh, because here, mostly we use a synchronized replication. Uh, Unlike a synchronized replication, using synchronized, and the master must guarantee that the data has been replicated to the slave. Then the master will reply to the client that the data is saved. So using this way, we can guarantee that our data is safety. Even the master is crashed. The, new, the slave is promoted to a new master, and we can know that we have already the newest data. We can't lose our data. But there is has another problem is that, as you can see, we have only two loads. And if the master is down, the slave promote to a new master, and there is st still one load when we meet a single, load single point problem again. So 
how can we solve this problem? And mostly, we can't use only two loads. We need multi loads. And uh, most of, uh, mostly, if we want one load to be uh, be a high available, we still need three loads. Maybe the quorum. And as you can see, that for one master, we need two slaves. And here, we because as I said, be, as I said before that. We use a synchronized replication, but there is a, a trade-off here because for the better performance and the high availability, because using synchronized replication can reduce performance. So sometimes here we use the quorum replication, which means that if the master found that the majority of the servers has already saved, uh, replicated the same data, it can think that the data has been saved. The data is safe, and uh, we can think that the data is consistency. As you can see, that the master just only replica to the data to the one slot, and uh, he thinks that the data has been saved in two loads, and uh, he thinks that the data is safe. So, and another problem comes is that when the master, because now we have three replicas, or even more, we have more replicas and now it's the master is on, which one, which slave do we need to promote to a new master? Uh, that's it, obviously, and uh, we need to promote the slave which has the Lewis data, but how can we know the, data, the slave has the Lewis data? So, uh, this is one problem I left here, and the other problem is that because now we have smart replicas and we are in a distributed system, because we are a distributed system and every, each, each load is communicated with other loads through the letter work. Because we are a letter work and the letter work can be broken. So we will meet some scenario like the uh, brain split. And uh, for here you can see that the old master is isolated from the other cluster. Uh, sorry, the old master is isolated and the new master is, pro and the new master is promoted. So here we exist two master, one old slave master and a new master. And at this time, uh, unlucky, some client still client to the old master. So we meet, a, we meet a problem that, can this client still read data from this master? Yes or no? And uh, I assume that we, now we have a, a key, we name, one, uh, we name A with value one in the master. So if the client read A with value one, it's okay. But then later, if we write a new value two to this key A, and then if the client read the, uh, read the data from the old master, still read A with, with value one, it can't be accessible because it breaks the data consistency. And because we, read, we, read, uh, we write a new data, but the client read a slave data. And uh, it's not accessible in, the, in some critical uh, database scenarios. So how can we solve this problem? As, we, as you can see, I list many problems from the one node and to the multi load. And uh, luckily, we have the joint, con uh, sorry, we have the consensus algorithm. And the consensus algorithm uh, algorithm can help us to solve this problem I said, be, uh, I said above. And uh, in the current world, there are two popular cons uh, consensus algorithms. One is Paxos and the other is Raft. And here we, I only talk about Raft because I think that Raft is more simple and more easy than Paxos and, uh, still, and I even think that it's more easy to use in production. And I, I even think that you can uh, use our product uh, rough library in the production soon, later. <laughs> so, rough is easy, I think, and uh, I think if, if you want to master rough, I think that you only need to uh, know two, po two points. Um, the one is how the rough uh, elect the leader, and the other thing is that how the rough do the log replication. And I even think that if you know these two keys and you have you have already mastered the raft. Oh, let's begin. The first is that 
the, let's talk about election. And uh, for the ROST cluster, every load has three roles, the leader, the folder, and the candidate. And uh, every ROST cluster has only one leader. And the leader is elected by the majority of the peers, other peers, and only if the leader is elected, and only the leader can handle the client, can, can only handle the client client. No more, no, uh, um, sorry. The leader can only, not only the write, but also the read must be through the leader. So if, if so, at this time, because we have only one leader, so we don't, we don't need to meet the uh, brain split problem, as I said before, because only the read and the write through, only through the leader. And if the leader is elected, what other, what other peers are the followers? The followers will do nothing but just receive the uh, message from the leader and do the local replication. And even the follower, if the follower doesn't receive any messages from the leader for a long time, the leader will become to the candidate and uh, begin to elect a new leader. This is a whole picture of the election. At the first, what the peers are the followers. And after an election timeout, the follower will become the candidate. The candidate will vote by itself and the candidate will send the vote to other peers. When the candidate found that it received the vote from the majority of the servers and it can become the leader. Of course, the candidate you found that uh, there, is ha there has someone become the leader and it will, become, it will be step back, to, fall back to the follower. Okay. When, the leader is when the leader is elected and the leader only uh, to handle the client request, when, for example here, the client will write some data to the leader and the leader will use its consensus module. We need a rough, here is a rough algorithm and to replicate this data into the other followers. And here, each load will append the command to the, its own rough logs. When the leader found that the majority of the server had received this rough log, and you can think that the rough log is committed. After the rough log is committed, it can apply this rough log and apply this to the station machine. And this is a common replicated state machine with the replic, 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 with the replication log. And this is the core concept of the raft. And uh, as I said before, and here, but uh, uh, there are many things I don't mention here about the raft, like term, like snapshot, and then how the memory shape change about how raft do the add load and the remove load. But, and how the raft do the preval. If you want to must, uh, really want to must, uh, master the raft and you should load this concept. And of course, you need to do many optimization to, for the raft and like, use it in your production, like use the pipeline and the, to, and the batch to speed up the network transportation and use learner to let the, make the uh, membership change more stable. And luckily, um, the world uh, optimization I list above has all been supported in our rough library. So here I will talk about the rough library here. And you can see the repo here and you can use it directly from the crate. And our rough library is inspired by the HCD raft. Uh, because each three rough has been used in production for a long time and many popular projects like Kubernetes, like CoreRoachDB, have already used it in production. So it's a good start for us too, to inspire from the ETCD raft. And uh, the rough library is a tiny library and uh, it's very light. You can embed it into your application easily to provide it a consensus uh, layer. And uh, the rough library is only focused on the consensus algorithm. So you should, uh, uh, you should uh, need, you need to consider how to save the rough log and how to apply the rough log and uh, save it into the state machine and how to communicate with other rough load uh, by yourself. And using rough load is very, using the rough library is very easy. And uh, you can see the whole picture here. And at first you need to create a rough load like, okay, 
most likely there is an error. You need to create a rough load, and when we create a rough load, and you can see that every rough load is a steering machine, and what we need to do is to drive that steering machine from this state to other state, and mostly we have three ways to drive it. Uh, one is for T, and uh, which means that we need to drive the its rough load regularly. For example, every 100 milliseconds, we call the tick, 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 to drive the rough load. And another way is that the, pro, the client will uh, se pro send the request to the rough load, to the leader explicitly, and uh, we call this propose. We use propose to drive the rough load. And here is that. Uh, sometimes because the rough, the rough load will receive the message from other rough load and we call here we use step to drop the rough load. After we drive, drive the rough load and the rough load will move to some state and sometimes it's the rough load will move to a ready state. And in the ready state, we can do something. In the ready, we can get the entries from the ready and apply to the rough logs and we also can get committed entries and apply to the sleep machine, and we can also get some messages and send them to the remote rough loads. And after we hand all the ready, finish all the ready, and we are called advanced to drive the, to advance the rough load to another step, to another state, and the like to again. So, uh, when, you want, uh, when you want to create a rough load, the first thing that you need to create a rough storage. And, uh, it's very simple, and you can see that there are only six functions. And the first initial state return the initialized state of the rough of the rough load. The, in, the rough state include the current term, the current commit, committed index, and the current voter. And entries uh, return a slice of the rough load from the low to the high, and the term return the current load and the first index, and the last index return the first and the last uh, the index of the whole rough logs. And the snapshot return the current the snapshot of a current state machine. You can think that you take a picture of the state machine at that time. And then you can create a rough uh, create a rough load and with your storage and with a configuration. Uh, here you can see that the configuration is very simple and even each rough load has a unique ID. And then the here is a election tick and a heartbeat tick. Uh, you may still remember that I, I mentioned the tick before. So for every tick, um, for example, the election tick is for the folder. So when we, t when we tick 10 times, the folder, if the folder doesn't receive any message from the leader, and it will send, begin to the candidate and begin to the election again. The heartbeat means that when the tick three times, and the leader will send a heartbeat to the other followers. And so well, after we create a rough load, we can do something. Here you can see, as I said before, the T, the T drive rough, rough load regularly and use slap to receive the remote message from the other load and drive it and use, use a propose to receive the command from the client and drive it too. When, when we drive the rough load and it may be entered the ready state. We can call the load has ready function to check whether the rough load is ready or not. And when the rough load is ready, we can get this ready. And here, if you can see this entries, and we can append this entry to the rough logs. And here is message. We can send this message to the other remote load. And here is committed rough, rough logs. And we can apply this to the state machine. After we finish them all, we can call the advanced. And uh, I, I don't mention some, but in the ready, we also need to handle the snapshot or handle the leader change, term change, or commit index change, but I don't mention, I don't list here in this talk. So as you can see, using the rough library is very simple, and I even think that you can embed it into your application to provide a, a consensus data a consensus database service easily. And we have already do it. That, and that's it, TechEV. Uh, TechEV is a distributed transactional key value database and it's based on the rough library. And you can visit the repo here. And we use the RoxDB to save the rough logs and uh, 
to save the slave machine data. And we will use the gRPC to communicate, to do the network communication. And even more, now, do you know the CNCF? Everybody know here? Uh, oh, now, PyKV is the, is the CNCF sandbox project, but it has not been announced. Maybe it will be announced in the, uh, in the end of this month. I, and uh, here, I just pre-announce it. And uh, now, Tech, maybe Tech, I even think that TechV may be the first Rust database storage, database project in the CNCF. You, written by Rust, the first written by Rust, the database. So, and uh, our ambition, amb uh, so if you are pay attention to us, welcome to join us to develop TechV. <laughs> so, that's all. Yeah. <laughs>